All right, we're going to look at the intermediate value theorem here, and this one is not an, a calculus theorem. This is actually more of an algebra topic, but it shows up a lot in calculus and on the AP exam, so I thought we would go over it some. Um, the intermediate value theorem, I'm going to give you my explanation of what it is, and then I'm going to give you the, the true math definition. But uh, an example of the intermediate value theorem, uh, what it would say is that if you have a continuous function, and continuous is extremely important with the intermediate value theorem. Um, the function must be continuous in order for the intermediate value theorem to apply. So if you have a continuous function that travels from a y-coordinate of 1 to a y-coordinate of 5, then you know it must at some point hit a y-coordinate of 2. Uh, and Or it must also hit 3 and 4. It's got to hit everything between 1 and 5. And that is what your intermediate value theorem says. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a uh, I'll say a dumb theorem, but it's one that just kind of makes sense and you're surprised that it actually has a name and made a textbook, uh, made it in the textbook because it is just kind of a it's something that you should have thought of anyway. Uh, it basically says that you know, uh, at one point I was 15 years old, now I'm 35, so I had to be 21 at some point in my life because I went from 15 to 35. So uh, that's your intermediate value theorem. Just says if you go from A to B, you have to every point between A and B. The mathy definition, uh, if uh, your function is continuous on some interval A to B, uh, and F of A is not equal to F of B. So let's graph this out. We have A, we have B, and I'll have F of A right here. That's just your y-coordinate at A. So F of A, and you have to have an F of B that's not the same. Here's F of B and your function is continuous. Now, it doesn't tell you much more about the graph other than the fu that the function is continuous. It could go up and come back down. It could go down and come up. It could go up and down and up and down and up. Uh, it could do a whole bunch of things as long as the function is continuous between those two points. Um, so let's see, let's keep reading. And n is some number between a and b. So let's put in, I don't know, we'll put n right here. It's somewhere between a and b. It could be, or f of a and f of b. It could be somewhere up here, somewhere down here, as long as it is between f of a and f of b. Then the intermediate value theorem says that there must be an x-coordinate somewhere between a and b such that f of that x-coordinate is equal to n. So let me go back and actually draw in a graph. Let's say my graph does this. Uh, what the graph, what the theorem says is that at some point I have to hit this y coordinate and it actually happens right there. You have to have a point somewhere on the interval such that f of c is equal to that n value. Um, and that's what the intermediate value theorem says. It's kind of silly, but that's what it says. Uh, it's usually used to show that a uh, function actually has roots. So uh, let's do three quick examples of using the intermediate value theorem. Let's see, let's let this be my function, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, and show that f of x must equal 7 somewhere on the interval negative 1 to 3. Uh, well, the way I'm going to show that is I'm first going to find out where my function begins and where it ends on this interval. Uh, it is a continuous function. This is a quadratic a parabola. So I do know that the function is continuous, and I'm going to see all right, my function begins at x equals negative 1. Let's find the y-coordinate when x is negative 1. So that would be 2 times negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 plus 1. Ah, geez, is that algebra? Whoops, lost my plus 1. Uh, that would be 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 6. So I'm starting at the ordered pair, negative 1, 6. And then I'm going to find out what f of 3 is. So that'd be 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 1. Let's see, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18 minus 9 plus 1, and that gives you 10. So I'm starting, if you wanted to kind of visualize this thing, I'm starting at an ordered pair of negative 1, 6, and I'm ending at the ordered pair 3, 10. Since my function is continuous, then I know that at some point between these two, I've got to hit a y-coordinate of 7. 
Um, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Uh, if you wanted to kill it dead with a full sentence, you could say that f of negative 1 is equal to 6, and f of 3 is equal to 10. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem, IVT, guarantees, oh, I hope I spelled this right, guarantees, am I spelling that right? Close enough. Guarantees that f of x is equal to 7 somewhere, we don't know where, but we know it happens somewhere on the interval, my writing is crap, somewhere on the interval negative 1 to 3. Now I'm not telling you to find out where it happens, I'm simply saying show that this does occur somewhere on that interval. Uh, and since we're going from 6 to 10, then we know that we have to hit 7 somewhere along the journey. And that's all you do. That's all you do. Let's try this one. f of x is this. Show that f of x has at least one root on 0 to 1. This is the most common use of your intermediate value theorem. Uh, remember a root is an x-intercept also known as a zero, right? And uh, an x-intercept is when your y-coordinate is equal to zero, or you could say f of x is equal to zero. So it's just like that last problem. We're trying to show that there is a point where this function is equal to zero somewhere on the interval zero to one. So I will start off by finding f of zero. f of zero is going to be nice. Zero cubed plus five times zero minus three is negative three. f of one is going to be 1 cubed plus 5 times 1 minus 3. That's 6 minus 3 is 3. So I travel from negative 3 to positive 3. Therefore, there must be, that's an M, must be a root on the interval 0 to 1. Uh, and you do need to pay attention to context because a lot of people will see 0, 1 and think it's an ordered pair, but it's preceded by the word on. This is an interval. Now, if it said at 0, 1, now we're talking about the ordered pair 0, 1. But if we're on 0, 1, then that's an interval from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So pay attention to the context when you see things that look like ordered pairs. Uh, last example I wanted to do. Uh, same type question. I'm giving you a function. I want you to show that there is at least one root. Now that's, that occurs when f of x is equal to 0. And so I'm going to start by plugging in my endpoints. So f of 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 minus 1. f of 3 is negative 3 squared. That'd be negative 9 plus 3 times 3, which is 9 minus 1. That's negative 1. Ah! So I have f of 0 is negative 1, and f of 3 is negative 1. So you may be thinking, well, there's not a root. We didn't change from negative to positive or positive to negative. Um, so we don't know if there's a root. Uh, this does not mean a root does not exist. It just means we might need to do a little bit more investigation. Uh, now notice the directions, or the problem says, show that f does have a root. I left the word doesn't in there. Okay, show that f has at least one root. I'm not going to ask you to find something that doesn't exist. I'm not going to be that mean. Uh, now I might say, does f of x have a root? And in that case, I'm asking the question, and you have to determine whether or not f does have a root. But here I'm pretty much telling you that a root exists. You need to find it. So far, I don't have compelling proof that there is one root between 0 and 3. So what I'm going to do, since this is inconclusive, I'm going to start plugging in numbers between 0 and 3. And what I need to do is find some x coordinate that gives me a positive y. So I'm going to try f of maybe 1. f of 1 is negative 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 1, which is positive 1. Hey, there we go. So even though 1 wasn't one of the points, uh, by plugging in x equals 1, I have shown that between 0 and 1, I change signs. My function changes from negative to positive. Therefore, there must be a root somewhere between, we can actually narrow it down, it's between 0 and 1. So we know that f of 0 is negative 1, f of 1 is positive 1, whoops, equals. And therefore, there is a root. Now the 
problem specified on the interval 0 to 3, but we can be a little bit more specific. There's a root on the interval 0 to 1. And we could even say that since f of 3 is negative 1, that means there's another root on 1 to 3. Because uh, f of 1 was positive, f of 3 was negative, therefore we had to hit the x-axis somewhere on the journey. And so that is your intermediate value theorem. It's rather straightforward. It's kind of nice. It is an algebra theorem. Notice we didn't do a lick of calculus on any of these three problems, but this does show up some in calculus.